Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert, and uh, we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 5 today, a passage that was originally directed at pastors, uh, elders, leaders at uh, churches, but I think is helpful for all of us today. So I'm going to be preaching a little bit to myself and to you, if that's okay, because I believe that there are broad applications for this as we kind of step back from it. So uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, 1 Peter 5 says, So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder, as a witness for the sufferings of Christ, as well as the partaker of glory, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Then he says this, he says, Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, he tells the church leaders here, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Now, there's a lot of specific examples that we could look into there. There's even some other uh, instructions he gives them there. But I think the the phrasing he uses there is interesting. The flock of God that is among you, that is there in front of you. Not the theoretical one that you wish it would be. Not the one over on the other side of town that is better and has less problems and people that are more encouraging, which is a side note. I love Calvary. You guys are incredibly encouraging and kind. It is a joy to pastor you uh, here at this church. But across America, pastors struggle with contentment to to serve and shepherd the flock of God that is among them. Do you know that the average stay of a pastor in America is just three years? Uh, I spent uh, almost a decade in student ministry working with teenagers. It's even worse with youth pastors. The average youth pastor uh, time of employment in one church is 18 months. Um, And so much of that speaks to the lack of contentment that we as humans struggle with. That's not just pastors. Can we all agree that we as people struggle to be content? It's, it's with our jobs. We struggle with contentment with our cars, with our devices and electronics. We struggle with contentment with our houses, with all the possessions we have, even the things that we do in the place of life that, that we are in. We don't enjoy being content, and the marketing geniuses around us know that. Uh, pay attention to some of the next advertising you see, uh, you know, the ads on social media or commercials on YouTube or whatever it might be. You may have even had to watch a video before this video. I don't know how that works, but so much of advertising causes us to be discontent so that we go and spend money on something. Because we as people struggle with contentment. Yet 1 Peter um, points to the struggle, not just for pastors, but for all of us, to be content with where God has us. You know, elsewhere in the New Testament, in 1 Timothy 6, verse 6, it says this, it says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. There's great value in us pursuing godliness with contentment. And so today I want to challenge you to reflect on, are you content with where God has you right now? Not just content with your stuff, your devices, your cars, your house, your, but the stuff that you have, but the things that God has in front of you to do, your job, your family situation, the environment that you're in, are you content and are you seeking to serve God where he has you right now? Or are you just trying to think ahead to, well, I'll serve God when this thing happens, when I'm in this situation, when I have more free time here, when I finally retire, then I'll volunteer and serve. Or are you willing to, with humility, say that, God's plan for your life is better than your plan. Did you catch how he ends here? He says, but clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So today, let me encourage you to just clothe yourself in humility and submit that the God of the universe has better plans than you do, and that includes where you are today. And seek to be content and serve and take advantage of the ministry opportunities that are right in front of you, not the hypothetical ones that are down on the horizon. Hope that you have a great day, Calvary, and we'll see you next time.